as to whether or not they wanted to build this building. The big concern was how are we going to pay for it? Well, cooler heads got together and people of the state said we're not putting a sales tax on the entire state uh, because that isn't fair. And everybody said that's not fair. So the uh, Bidwell family, the owner of the Cardinals, they said we will commit $150 million toward the building. The people that operate the Fiesta Bowl, Tostitas Fiesta Bowl, they have committed about $70 million over a period of time. They use the stadium once a year, every year, for the Fiesta Bowl. That's they, they operate the stadium. They get it. Huh? Yeah. And they also get it every, twice a year, every four years, when they host the BCS championship. So they're involved. The rest of the money came from a special tax put on hotel rooms and rental cars only in Maricopa County. So the rest of the state's not paying. People said, that's a good idea, let's build it. So they passed the bill. What also came to be with that is this organization called the Arizona Sports and Tourism Authority. They're a quasi-governmental organization that wears a couple of hats. The most important being, they own this building and the 25 acres that it sits on. There's 160 acres or 160 acres around us, and that is owned by the Bidwell family. It's called Sportsman's Park. It's a great name for the parking lot, but that's what it's called. You'll hear about that in a little bit as well. So, the uh, Arizona Sports and Tourism Authority is also in charge of our Cactus League baseball, and they're out there trying to bring more teams in, and maybe some of you know it, uh, next year, 2009, we're going to add three teams here in the Valley. We have the Dodgers and the White Sox out here in Glendale. The Cleveland Indians will be over here in our neighbor's place in Goodyear. Probably in 2010, they're going to be joined by the Cincinnati Reds. So that's part of the uh, job of the Arizona Sports and Tourism Authority. Well, you know, it's kind of a dull day out, and yet there's no lights on in the stadium, and yet we still have some light in here. You can see. Well, the owners of the Cardinals, the Bidwell family, wanted a stadium that has an open and closing roof, but they didn't want a dark stadium. So the architect chose this material up there. It's called bird air fabric, and it's designed to let light in and keep the weather out. Excuse me. This is Tony. Go ahead. Hey, Tony. We're funding for our tiny, so... Uh when you're at the top of the media elevator before you come down to the service level, okay? <coughs> okay, I've got that. We'll be on our way shortly. I'm going to coordinate everything here. Um, so, this fabric, as I said, its job is to let light in and keep the weather out. But before we could get the fabric up there, we had to have a roof. You notice we have two big trusses that run the length of the stadium. Those are called Brunel trusses. They're named after an English engineer who developed that system. They're 700 feet long, 87 feet high in the middle, and each one of them weighs 1,800 tons. The two sections that open and close, they come together where you see a diamond form, kind of in the middle of the field there. One slides this way, one slides the other way. Just opens up over the field area. And each one of those sliding panels weighs 550 tons. Now, all of that steel was put together down in the dirt before we had any concrete here. We had four of these big super columns, two at this end, two at the far end, where you see the end of that truss in that notch, in that big super column. When that steel was all put together, it was lifted at one time, all the way to the top. It took four days, 24 hours a day. It's one of the few times we had four days straight of rain in Phoenix as well, <laughs> but we got it up there. <laughs> Heaviest lift ever in North America. 11.9 million pounds. All that steel went up in a system of cables and hydraulic system that lifted it all the way up. So it was really quite an engineering feat. Once it was there, we could stretch that fabric, that bird air fabric, which is very strong. You could probably drive a small pickup up there, but I wouldn't do it because I'm not sure you could stop in time before you started <laughs> seeing the concrete coming at you. And it's also like a trampoline. You can bounce on it. It's uh, they figure that it'll last about 50 years, so it's, it's been used on a uh, big <coughs> super uh, mall over in uh, Maui, Hawaii, where it's withstood hurricane force winds, tropical storms, and the sun and the heat, everything's fine, so it works out very well. 
The building itself took three years and three months to build, and it cost $455 million. And we're happy to point out that it came in on time and on budget. It was not a government job, so it was planned one way. All right, we're going to start our walk. I have one, two little rules, really. One, please stay together so you can hear all the really important stuff.